All right, guys, welcome to episode four. In the first three episodes, we actually covered the whole book of Haggai. Not the whole book, sorry, chapter one of Haggai. So good job to you guys for sticking through. By the nutshell, Haggai chapter one, it's all about people forsaking the Lord, their consequences for their disobedience. They choose to respond to God and obey God because they feared the Lord mm. and God was the one who enabled them. You know, mm. to do so. So in chapter 2, we will go ahead and see what has chapter 2 has in store for us. Mm. Before we go, uh, let us pray. God, thank you again for your book, the book of Haggai, mm. that was written by this man who was used by you mm. to point people to rebuild your temple. Mm. I pray for us that even as we hear your word today, may we have the desire to rebuild your temple in our lives today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, as you all know the drill, we'll read. We'll start by reading God's word first, all right? We'll do about one verse each. Mm. It says here, In the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to all the remnant of the people, and say, who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Is it not as nothing in your eyes? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Zehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. According to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit remains in your midst. Fear not. Boom. <laughs> You're making a lot of noises here. <laughs> but uh, maybe we can go through. You know, today, there's three main points. First, we realize that it's a problem and I will dive deep into that later. Second, there was an exhortation by Haggai the prophet. Mm. And third, there is the reason why this exhortation was given. So first, mm. the problem. I'm not too sure about you guys, you know, sometimes, let's say we need to train. Yep, After yep, yep. needing to train for a marathon, Mok is surely familiar with this. Mm. Sometimes in the middle of training, you are tired. Mm. You know, your, your eyes is no longer on the prize or the goal and you get sluggish. You decide to cut corners, mm. reduce your training program, you know, eat fried chicken, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> drink coke, etc, mm -hmm. etc. And the same kind of thing happened to the people of Israel and I'm sure we can relate to yeah, them. Yeah. I mean, even, it's like, even if you don't train for a marathon, you know how New Year resolutions work, right? It you never... start off in the first month and you get sluggish. Yeah. Because we find the goal is too difficult. Yes. It's too difficult, yes. right? And that is where we can see the implication here, right? Because God has to remind them. Yeah. He says, very few of them have saw the former glory of Solomon's temple. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the target is so hard to reach. Yeah. And therefore, they are sluggish. Yep. And, exactly. and that's why here, Haggai came to address them. Mm. Because after a month, they yeah. kind of lose momentum, yep, yep. lose motivation, lose sight, and maybe even lose their sense of wanting to obey God. Yeah. But God, in His grace, mm. I mean, God can just like, boom, bam! Exactly. They all disappear from the face of the earth. Yep. But in His grace, send Haggai mm. to address their sluggishness. Exactly. And God's true Haggai exhorts them. Two words, right? Be strong. Wow. And you see that happening three times in this short verse, right? Be strong, O Joshua. Be strong, uh, Zerubbabel, and be strong, all you people of the remnants, right? So, I mean, being strong is a very, very frequent exhortation in Scripture, right? Even in Moses, Deuteronomy 11, 8, be strong, right? Moses told to Joshua, be strong and courageous, right? Joshua told to the people in Joshua 10, 25, be strong. You know, even in the Psalms 27, be strong and let your heart take courage, and even the New Testament, Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might, right? So be strong is, is something that uh, characterizes God's people. Mm -hmm. It's something that God uses to encourage His people. Mm -hmm. But more importantly is, what is the reason to be strong? Like, I mean, I mean, every day if I tell you to be strong, what would we, you know? If, we, <laughs> if there's no God, right? I mean, sometimes we be strong, we are actually thinking of some goal that we have. Yeah. It's really against ourselves. Yeah. For example, in the past when I was running, maybe I was aiming for the SEA Games gold medal. Mm -hmm. When I'm training, I would say, Mok, be strong because I really want that SEA Games gold medal, right? 
Yeah. And, and you see that there, there is nothing about Christ in there. Yeah, and right. sometimes the word be strong can just be used as a positive reinforcement. Yeah, exactly. You know, some people, if you look at you know, all those like Facebook motivational videos, mm. it's about look in the mirror and every day tell yourself, be strong. You yeah. can do it. You are going to dominate the day. Your best day starts now. Yeah. And it's all positive psychology. But here, the reason the people yes. can be strong is because of this promise mm. that God is with them. Exactly, right? right? In verse uh, 4, it says yeah. that I am with you. Yeah. And in verse 5, he says, My spirit remains in your midst. Amen. Fear not. Mm. And this whole idea that God is with them is very important. Mm. That's why the tabernacle, the temple, the tabernacle is always built around the center of the place. So people can be reminded that God is with them. Mm. Uh, when in uh, Exodus, you know, when after God gave them the commandments, God assured that He is with them. Mm. In Hebrews, God says, I am with you. I will never forsake you. I will never mm -hmm. leave you. Right? And even in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. Mm. So the reason that people can be strong is this sense of knowing, not just in your head connectively, mm. but in your heart yes. that God is with them. And because of that, they are able to be strong and to mm. carry on building the temple of God. Exactly. I think that, that's unbelievable, right? <laughs> and I mean, if I just want to zoom back to the, the Israelites' history, right? When they were under Egyptian rule, mm -hmm. they were also pushed Probably the Egyptian masters will tell them, be strong, you know, build, build this, build that, build this, build that, be strong. But the, the reason why they have to so-called be strong in that time was that they will have to fear punishment, mm. right? They will be having lashes and whipping you if you yeah. are not pushing hard. But here, God ends with two words, fear not, you know. Yeah. There's no fear in punishment, yes. but truly that God is with us. And I think that's so interesting, right? Yeah, that's so a very interesting shift in mindset about why we have to be strong. So knowing this truth about being strong because God is with you, again, the famous two words, so what? What does it mean for us today? Well, I think number one, it gives us a lot of encouragement, right? Because uh, in today's day and age, sometimes we can be very discouraged by things that go on around us. Uh, maybe we are struggling through a relationship, struggling through at work. But the promise here still stands, right? God, who is the Lord of all, He is in control of your situation and He is with us. And I think that gives us a lot of comfort and rest such that we can work out from that rest and we can actually uh, work in, in such peace in our hearts. And I think that is profound. Yeah. So the question I have for you guys today is this. How does knowing the truth that God is with us mm. changes the way you live today. Mm. How does knowing the truth that God is with us changes the way we live today? Mm. And with that, we will end off today's episode and see you in the next one.